we've set up a simple way for you to give to our church online. If you want to give a quick gift, enter an amount, select a fund, then enter your email address and your first and last name. Then enter your payment details and click Give. And that's it. We'll send a receipt to your email address. To use a saved payment method or manage a recurring donation, you'll want to log in. Click the Login button and we'll send a code to your phone or email account. Verify the code and you're in. Now your payment info is ready to go when you want to make a donation. To manage your giving details, switch over to the My Giving page. Here you'll see more ways you can give. You can also add a payment method, a bank account or a debit card, set up a recurring donation, and view your giving history. Good to be with you this morning. I'm so thankful that you're able to take part with us. Let me just start off by saying as we enter into this Christmas week, believe it or not, it's here, isn't it? And we just praise the Lord for His presence and for His goodness. And let me just say Merry Christmas to all of you as we uh, start this journey into this season what truly a year it has been and still is and no doubt will continue to be in steps ahead but we're grateful that we're able to reach and able to do the work that is necessary to go forward and to call upon the Lord so uh, right now I'm just thinking that as we step into this moment of the next few minutes together that we are able to know that God is breathing life in us. So while I'm here, just taking a moment to get into the Word of the Lord, my prayer over you all today is for God's blessings, for His goodness, for His strength, for his glory to continually be upon your lives. We did the drive through nativity yesterday. Uh, let me back up Friday evening, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing how fast time flies. And uh, Friday evening, and uh, from 6 to 8, and actually, until about 5 minutes to 8, something right around that area, uh, we did not have, I'm talking about one break of automobiles or buses. There was even some buses that uh, know of a, a bus, I should say, that I know of that came from a church out of town. And we are just thankful for so many of you that uh, join with us. If you're online this morning and you were able to take that in with us, thank you so much and let me just say to everyone and perhaps in our 1030 setting I'll share it again but everyone that participated I know we froze uh, a lot of people outside that worked with us uh, but uh, to God be the glory and uh, for all the hard work now let's just take the next few moments into the word of the Lord shall we Hebrews chapter 10 is where I want to take and direct our attention and start in this message it just says for the law having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of the <clears throat> of the things can never with these same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make those who approached perfect in other words, all the animal sacrifices that was done year by year, it was not enough to get back into where God needed us to be and to be able to call upon His name. <clears throat> I want this morning, as we look into the Word of the Lord, verse 2 says, For then would they not have ceased to be offered, for the worshipers once purified would have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a reminder of sins every year. 
For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Can I tell you, it may only just cover them temporarily. But we needed a permanent covering. We needed a permanent step of obedience. Perhaps that's what we should title this this morning, is Steps of Obedience. Because, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> because of those steps that we need to make today, we are able to call upon the name of the Lord through the perfect sacrifice. Amen? And the only way that there could be a perfect sacrifice was be, because of the steps of obedience. Because <clears throat> verse 5 says, Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, this is what Jesus did for you and for me. Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will, O God. Previously saying, sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sins you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold. I have come to do your will. Think about that for just a moment. The Lord Jesus Christ come to do the will of the Father. In other words, steps of obedience. He said, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. By that will we have been sanctified. Through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, now catch this, once and for all. Jesus paid the price. I know this week we'll be recognizing the virgin birth. We'll be in our hearts celebrating the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ who has come. But I need to tell you, the manger is empty. Aren't you glad of that this morning? Even though it once was filled because of steps of obedience. But it's empty today. But I need to tell you, after 30, close to 33 years of journey on this earth, Jesus, steps of obedience fulfilled by being crucified on the cross. By Him shedding of His precious blood for you and for me, I've got good news this morning. The cross is empty. And because the cross is empty, Jesus' steps of obedience did not remain in that borrowed tomb. But three days later, He rose again. I'm here to tell you this morning, while we're celebrating a virgin birth this week, we are also celebrating a risen Savior. Because He is at the right hand of the Father. He is praying on your behalf and mine. He is calling out to whatever your need is today. You need healing in your life. He's the healer. You need provision in your life. He's the provider. You need the way made tonight, the, the, today. He's here to open up that way for you. To know that Jesus is Lord of all. Even with the very words that Jesus himself did. When he called it unto him. He said these words. He began to speak these words. Let me just bring it up real quick, if I may. I do believe with all of my heart, in Luke 22, it says with these words, in verse 42 of Luke 22, saying, Father, if it is your will, this is in the Garden of Gethsemane, before the cross, Take this cup from me, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. What I've come to tell us together this morning is that Jesus fulfilled that cup. He fulfilled the crucifixion. He fulfilled the resurrection. He's alive forevermore. 
He's here on your behalf. But the steps of obedience that he did, we must follow his example. There was a prophet by the name of Samuel that had what we found in Scripture a moment and a time because the people wanted to be like everyone else. The Israelites, it seemed like they wanted to have their own king on the face of the earth, which they had the Heavenly Father. They had Him to serve. They had Him to worship. He was their provision. He was their way. He was watching over them and leading and guiding them. But in 1 Samuel, they came to the prophet Samuel, the Israelites did, wanting to be like the others, and they asked for a king, just like the others of the kingdoms on the earth had. God provided them a king, a man by the name of Saul. Saul wound up as he was leading the children of Israel, get into a place to where he wanted God, but he was willing to almost force God. If we're not careful, we can get to the place just like King Saul, and we feel like that we can do church as good as God can because we're doing what we call church every day, and so often it could just be a normal routine. Has that what your life has become with the Lord? Just a routine it's a routine, nothing wrong with having a Bible study time or a devotional moment, but routines have become as dangerous as much as being a blessing in our lives. Because in other words, we feel like, oh, as long as I can do that and get it out of the way and get it off of a checklist for my day, then it's just like we put it back on the shelf. We compartmentalize the Lord in our minds, in our hearts, we only give Him a portion if we're not careful. And we are not recognizing that the steps of obedience is to have a relationship with Him. Let me tell you, you cannot compartmentalize your companions. When you made those wedding vows, it was for better, for worse, richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, till death do His part, where the two will become one. As God said of the man and the woman to be of one flesh and for them to be of a family, then he is looking for your relationship and his relationship to be the same as one and that the body of Christ is the bride of Christ and Christ is the groom of the body of the church. We recognize here as Samuel was not at the place that King Saul thought he should have been. Maybe we get to a place sometimes God is not where we expect Him to be. Can I tell you? God gets to be wherever He wants to be and how He wants to do it. Sometimes I believe that He even does things opposite so that we can recognize that we are not controlling Him. It is He who stays in the place for us to be dependent upon Him. Sometimes it's like we're trying to lead Him around, and that will never happen according to Him. But here in 1 Samuel, in the Word of the Lord, chapter 15, it begins to speak these words, "...as the Lord is great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices." As in obeying the voice of the Lord, he said, Behold, <laughs> hallelujah, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed the fat of rams. Went on to say, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry, because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He has also rejected you from being king. This is what prophet Samuel said to King Saul, I need you to understand this morning that the importance of the steps of obedience is still in place for you and for me today. And to call upon Him and to know that He is worthy for us. We will never be worthy enough for Him. It's only through His precious blood that makes us worthy 
We'll never be perfect enough for him, but it's only through the shedding of his precious blood and the sacrificing of his life, the lamb who was slain came back from the grave as the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And today he is here for you and for me to be able to call upon him and to know that he is the way maker. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for your presence this morning. I give you praise and I give you glory today because I know that you are in every household. You are there with every heart, with every one right now. Lord, that you are breathing. I just sense your presence. I just feel like this moment was for us to stop at this time and just to worship you, to magnify you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you right now that someone is being miraculously healed that's here in this. Lord, that you are going in their hearts that are being healed completely. Their relationships being made whole right now, Father. How we give you praise and glory and thanksgiving. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus, we're here just to walk those steps of obedience today. Lord, we're here just to worship you today. I can't heal anyone, but you are. Lord, I can't save anyone, but you are. Lord, I give you glory and praise and thanksgiving. Lord, you know that any time I'm in a message and you, Holy Spirit, want to intervene, you're welcome to do this. So, Lord, we know, God, that what you have spoken into us is releasing into people's lives right now. I've always said, Lord, down through the years, if you wanted me to preach five minutes or even five hours, Lord, I would always give you everything that I have. But, Lord, right now I feel, Father, that you are complete in this message there may be more that I wanted to preach and to share, but right now, God, I'm giving you glory and praise. I'm giving you thanksgiving and worship. I know, Lord, that you are breathing new life into hearts and lives today. I thank you that there are ones that are taking those steps of obedience right now. And I give you praise that your presence is releasing, Lord, from throughout, whether you want to call it the airwaves, Lord, down through the avenues, and Lord, into all the heart and life of the campus, into the body of, the, of even the campus of the Eastern Church. But Lord, of everyone around this world, we give you glory and praise. For it all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, amen. And amen. God cares what's going on in your life today. Be blessed and be strengthened. Do you know Jesus is coming back soon? And we must be up and about his business. This message has been completed with his presence today. Amen. 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 Would you join with me by, if you would, join with us as worshiping and giving today. As we close this year out of 2020, yes, through the, our tithes and our offerings, we give the Lord praise for everything that He's doing. But let me also encourage you in year-end giving. If you could just open up, if you see the opportunity, if you know through the blessings of the Lord I'm here to tell you, God's still blessed in difficult and challenging times. And there's even times when God blesses even above and beyond what we could ask or think because it, gets, it gives God a chance to, what I call, showing up and showing out. So I encourage you today, go on eastoncog.org. There are four different ways online there that you can give. And then there's a fifth way. If you're local within driving distance and you're in a, if you're in and about uh, this area of Easton, Maryland, you want to pull through the parking lot of the Easton Church of God. We do have a 
uh, drop box there uh, at the office entrance area. You will see it there by a big mailbox outside. Boy, you'll see right behind the mailbox. Built into the church facility, there's a drop box. You can drop it there. And uh, we just thank you so much for doing that. And may the Lord continue to bless you today is my prayer. So continue to look up and lift up. God bless you till I see you again. <laughs>